So I suppose pretty much everyone knows you can just go on YouTube and search like full album or something like that and it'll come up with a whole bunch of albums that you can watch or theoretically download. Um, now, one thing that would be nice, wouldn't it be nice if you could just take, if you're one of those guys like me, who, if I listen to music, I want to have it on my computer, of course, tagged properly, split up into tracks, etc., etc. It'd be nice if there were a way of getting this stuff, downloading it, and splitting it up into tracks and automatically tagging it. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. I have two little scripts, or really one script that uses another, but a uh, script to do just that using YouTube DL and FFmpeg. Um, and I wrote this a while ago. I actually wrote this um, not for albums, but for like uh, splitting up audiobooks. I, th I think it was originally this audiobook, Hamlet's Mill, which is like, uh, it's a two-parter. And the first part is eight hours and 40 minutes. And I guess the second part's 540. Um, so it was a big pain having to do all the, like taking the track, getting the audio, then splitting it up with FFmpeg manually. So I wrote a script for it. So in this video, I'm going to use the example of, of course, the Unabomber's Manifesto, just because it's a meme on this channel. And because it's not copyrighted, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't use one of these copyrighted albums on this video. But obviously, you could hypothetically do that with any of these. Um, anyway, so I'm going to copy this URL. So you probably know if you watch the channel, but if you don't, I'll tell you. Uh, there is a um, command YouTube DL. Actually, maybe I'll pull up the manual. YouTube DL. So YouTube DL, of course, you just give it a URL from YouTube and it downloads the video. Uh, or you can say, I only want the audio, it downloads the audio, it can give any size you want. Uh, you can actually use it on different video sites, it just is named after YouTube. Um, so I have this particular alias of YouTube, D, uh, YouTube DL. Basically, if you run this, if you run YouTube DL, um, the format I want is best audio on a URL, what it's going to do is it's only going to download just the audio. Okay, so that's the first thing you want to do. You do that manually. You just download the, the track onto your computer. Um, and this is for the full album or full audiobook. Okay, uh, so I've, I've actually already done that. So here I have it. The second thing you need to do is you need time codes. Um, because basically what the script I'm going to, uh, the script I'm going to show you, what it does is you just give it a file, you give it a list, list of time codes in a file, and it will do everything automatically. So I actually already have a uh, list of all the, um, a list of all the tracks here, or not tracks, well I guess they're going to be tracks, but all the chapters and where their time codes are in this particular audio, at least I think this is the right one, it looks like around the right time codes. I did, I made my own audiobook of this a while ago, so I'm reusing the file. So here's how it works. Uh, actually, let me just, um, maybe I'll just run it. Uh, the book, the thing is called book split. Maybe I'll rename it to like album split. You just give it, well, it'll say, the first thing you give it is the um, audio, and then you give it the file that's the time codes. And I'm gonna run this, and then I'll show you the script in a second, but all it's gonna do is it's gonna prompt you for a couple of, you know, just the basic details about it. So the album or book title is gonna be, you know, in industrial society and its future. Uh, author is gonna be Theodore Kaczynski. I hope that's right. Enter year of publication, I don't know, mid 90s, I'm not quite sure. And then it's gonna go through and it's going to take the data that you gave it in that um, time code uh, file, and it's going to start splitting it up into parts. I'll actually show you, I'll, I'll speed through it in a second, but just to show you, see that it's made uh, this file here, it's already going through them, uh, all, already going through the file and splitting up it, splitting it up into parts, so you already have the introduction, the first chapter, and if you look at all of these, let me move it to another window so transparency isn't messing with you, but you can see that it, they're already named here, uh, it has the author and it also automatically does, for example, tracks and stuff like that. So this is automatically, okay, this is tra this is the third line in the file, so that's going to be the third track, etc. And it already knows, oh, there are going to be 25 in total. Okay, so I'm going to let it uh, finish uh, and in just a minute I'll come back and I'll show you the actual script. Well, a minute for me, a second for you. Okay, I left and came back, and it's all done splitting the files. Let's actually take a look at them. So, um, as I said, well, first off, notice that I actually have it uh, use lowercase and not use spaces. That's just 
you know, because I don't like it. I, you know, don't, obviously we're not going to have spaces in our file names here. Um, but you can see it has split all of these files. Um, all of them should be properly this tags. They are uh, working, stuff like that. Um, so anyway, let me show you how the script actually works. I have it pulled up here. Again, this is, um, I call it book split. I will have to remember the put, to put this on my GitHub and all that. But um, so basically, um, again, the idea is that uh, it, it asks for a book title, an author, and a year. Uh, it takes input audio. And then, as I said, I, I don't like using spaces and stuff in my file name, so I escape all that. You know, I, I make spaces, hyphens, and stuff like that and uh, make everything lowercase. I don't, I don't know, so, okay, I don't, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I feel like hyphens are like a soy dev thing to do. I feel like I should be using underscores, but I don't know. That's just my feeling. I, I don't know why I feel like that. I just, hyphens, that's like a zoomer thing. I don't know. Anyway, so it creates a little directory for it. Um, uh, here I have it use opus to tag or uh, for the extin uh, the extension um, and then it gets the number of lines in the file stuff like that so then it loops through every line of the file it reads the information and again the information looks like this it's a time code on the left and then all the rest of it is going to be the title of that chapter or um, you know uh, track or anything like that so it just goes through every single one of that uh, oh, one of those so to be clear, if, just in case you want to look in, at this yourself, uh, there are probably three notable things. First off, in order to use FFmpeg in a loop properly, you need to give it this option, no standard input. Uh, it just does, it will not work. You'll get crazy things happening. I'm not exactly sure why you have to do that, uh, but uh, someone who knows more about it can probably tell me. Uh, the second thing I'll talk about in a second, and that is I use a script called tag. Um, and I'll explain why I use that in a second. The other thing is that when it's looping through these, it technically, when it's on the first line, it isn't actually running FFmpeg. It only runs it after the first line because you need this data here. You need to know that this, you know, this chapter introduction goes from zero to this point. Okay. So it actually, it's actually running each through the loop, it runs the um, the command after the line it's supposed to be on. And then you actually have to do the last one outside the loop here. Anyway, so that, that's what that is. Now, I should, as I mentioned, um, I do have another script called tag. And this is really just, so the one thing that annoys me, well, it doesn't really annoy me, but one fact of life is that with different uh, audio containers or codecs, whatever, whatever. I, I always get confused about the difference between a codec and a container and all that kind of stuff, but I don't really know that much about it audio. Um, but the one thing you need to know is like, um, so I'm using Opus, as I said, and I have this little wrapper script called tag. Basically, I use this to like manually tag things, or I can give it um, command line options. So, you know, I can say like tag, uh, you know, artist name, and then, you know, here's my file or something like that, and it'll tag, tag it. Uh, the reason I have I like doing this with Opus files and Aug files especially is because by default, well, you need this uh, you need a separate command Opus tags to actually edit the tags whatsoever. But to do it, you can't like give it command line options like this where it's like A for artist, T for track title, or something like that. You have to do this thing where you echo in the uh, actual metadata and pipe it into Opus tags as standard input. It's so I don't know confusing to me. So I just use. Well, it was confusing when I wrote the script, then I now I use the script, and that's what I use tag, uh, for tagging Opus and Aug files. I also, I don't even tag MP3s anymore. I don't use MP3s anymore once I moved on to Aug and Opus. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so the tag script and the book split script together, they basically save me so much time because whenever I want an album or an audio book that I can't find elsewhere, I just get it from YouTube, I download the audio, I, um, I create one of, oops, got rid of my face, I create one of these things here, uh, a, just a, a file that has all of the uh, different time codes and stuff like that. And that's actually all you need. Uh, and of course, many people on YouTube will like put these up anyway. Uh, so you just have the file and that, feed it to the scripts, that's it. Um, the only other caveat is you have to have, you know, YouTube DL, FFmpeg, and, um, you know, Opus tools or whatever it is. Actually, let me see. I should probably say that because I didn't know that uh, till a bit ago. So the Opus, where's the script I had? Oh, I already closed it, didn't I? Okay, let me open up the tag script. 
Um, to be clear, this um, command opus tags, I forget what exactly the package name is. Um, something with opus in it. Uh, yeah, I guess it's opus tags. Okay, never mind. It was an obvious thing anyway. So you need opus tags, you need ffmpeg and YouTube DL. You probably at least have the other two if you watch my channel. Um, and yeah, that's how I do it. See you guys next time. Links are in my GitHub whatever in the video description.